In this module, we're going to be talking about mathematical induction. Um, a common analogy with mathematical induction is talking about an infinite sequence of dominoes. So we're going to get to this in a moment, um, but that's what uh, this illustration is about. So imagine that you had an infinite sequence of dominoes arranged on end. So it goes on forever. And you're told that each domino is a fixed and equal distance from the next domino. How will you know whether or not all of the dominoes will fall over? Well, if you think about it for a minute, you need to know two things. You need to know, one, that they are close enough together that pushing one over will push the next one. Right, so if we push this domino, what I want to know is that as this one falls, is it close enough to the next domino that it'll push that one over? and thus cause a chain reaction. Right? The second thing we need to know is that the first domino gets pushed over. Because remember, all the dominoes are equally spaced, and if they're close enough that pushing one over pushes another over, and we know that that first one gets pushed over, well, that first one's going to push the second one. Like that. And the second one is going to push the next one. And so on and so forth. And if we know just these two things, we know that all the dominoes, even if there's an infinite number of them, will fall over. And of course, here we're talking about mathematical dominoes, not the physical kind. Because, of course, in a physical A, you can never have a million or infinite number of uh, dominoes. And B, there are physical characteristics if you don't set them exactly the same distance apart and so on. So mathematical induction is this idea of trying to prove things on finite or infinite sequences. All right, this is mathematical induction, and this is why we talked about sequences um, in the last module, is because this is mathematical induction is proofs on sequences. Um, it's relatively new by proof standards. It was first used in 1575. Um, consider the other proof techniques we've used, the direct proof, the proof uh, by contradiction, and so on, uh, were used in ancient Greece of uh, 2,000 and more years ago. So in the 17th century, it was used by the famous mathematicians Pierre de Fermat and Blaise Pascal. And finally, Augustus de Morgan, who gave the name de Morgan's rule or de Morgan's law, um, finally gave it the name mathematical induction. So there's two steps to perform mathematical induction. The first step is called the base step or more commonly the base case. And what we do is here our goal is we want to prove this universal conditional statement that for all integers n greater than some starting value, so a is our starting value of our sequence, that some property is true about all the um, elements of the sequence, some property p of n. 
So the base step is kind of like showing that the first domino gets pushed over. We want to show that P of A is true. All right, we want to show that the property, whatever property it is that we're trying to prove, is true for the first value in our sequence. The next step is that we're going to want to show, this is like showing that if one domino pushes, is pushed over, it pushes the next one over. We're going to show that for some k greater than a, um, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true. All right, so this k and k plus 1, these are indices into our sequence. And so we're going to say, well, if I pick a random sequence that I know is within the range that the sequence will cover, I want to show that if it's true, then the next one is true. And we can do this uh, using a direct proof. So we will... We have a conditional statement. We will suppose this part, and we want to show this bottom part. All right, that's how we do direct proofs. And once we've done these two steps, step one, uh, the base case, and step two, the inductive step, we will have proven that that property, P of N, is true for all elements in our sequence, even if it's an infinite sequence.